You know my bit popping days are over. I hold my boots up and then retired from the disco floor. The center of my soul called me in is the space between your bed and wardrobe with the Louvre doors. My name is B Branch, and in 12 days, my mother, Bernadette Fox, will walk out on everything she's ever known. Today is Saturday, December 11th, and me and Mom are sitting at the Seattle Ferry Terminal, failing to get on a ferry to Bainbridge Island. Okay, this is insane. I'm going to see what the holdup is. You see, Mom and I had this idea that we'd escape. Life's been mad recently. One of the moms from school, Audrey Griffin, claimed that Mom ran over her foot. Then she bullied her into getting all our blackberry vines ripped out. Even now, she's hosting some hideous prospective parent brunch for my school in her giant house right at the bottom of our garden. Dad's away in DC selling his latest project for Microsoft, so me and Mom are Thelma and Louising it, hopefully without the terminal plunge off a cliff. <sighs> the storm drains flooded on the Bainbridge side. There are three boats waiting to unload. Put some music on, love. (laughs) (laughs) Mom opened up like the sun breaking through the clouds. You know how the first few notes of that song, there's something about George's guitar that's just so hopeful? It was like that when Mom sang. Here comes the sun, I say, it's all right. <laughs> I looked over and there were tears in her eyes. Oh, B, this song reminds me of you. Mom. Uh, I need you to know how hard it is for me sometimes. What's hard? The banality of life. But it won't keep me from taking you to the South Pole. We're not going to the the South South Pole. Pole. I know. It's a hundred below zero at the South Pole. Only scientists go to the South Pole. I love you, B. I'm trying. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mom. (sighs) This isn't working. (laughs) We're not going anywhere today. We drove in silence through the rain. Unbeknownst to us, 20 miles away, an entire hillside was descending on Audrey's front room, 20 small children, and 64 prospective parents. What's happening? Ollie, the hillside's coming down. Get the kids out of the front. What does she mean, the hillside's coming down? Epic, epic fail. Ollie, snap out of it. Audrey, help me get the children out. The downstream implications are enormous. Right, kids, nobody move. I'm going to make a line of cushions across the glass. (laughs) My house. What's happening to my house? Complete rethink going forward. Into a crocodile, everyone. Quick, smart. (laughs) It's stopping. Why is it stopping? It's it's getting dark. (laughs) What just hit us? That would be the one. Mom and I headed up Queen Anne Hill. We turned into our driveway. We were halfway through the gate, and there was Audrey Griffin walking up to our car. What is it now? Your hillside just slid into my home during a party for prospective Gaylor Street parents. I had no idea. Was anyone hurt? Thank the Lord, no. Okay, that's good. That's good. Good? My backyard is six feet high in mud. My curtains are ruined. My greenhouse crushed. Seedlings killed. Specimen apple trees that have taken 25 years to establish pulled up by the roots. Heirloom roses gone. The fire pit that I tiled myself is gone. 
And that sign. What sign? What kind of person puts up a sign? I'll have it taken down today. What sign? I'll pay for everything. That's the thing about Mom. She's bad with annoyances, but great in a crisis. If a waiter doesn't refill her water, look out. But when it comes to something truly bad happening, Mom plugs into this supreme calm. I think she got it from all those years half living in the children's hospital because of me. So, Mom got really calm, but this only seemed to set Audrey off worse. Audrey, the work I had done on the hillside was at your insistence. You do remember that? So none of it is your responsibility? How about the sign, then? Did I make you put that up, too? What sign? B, B, I did something really stupid. Audrey, I'm truly sorry about the sign. I did it on impulse the day I found you on my lawn with your gardener. Wow. So you think putting up a hateful billboard is an appropriate reaction to getting an estimate for yard work? It was an overreaction. So basically, you're insane? Don't stand there and pretend you haven't been playing this game. How about getting Gwen Goodyear to send out that email about me running over your foot? What was that? Oh, Bernadette. You really need to stop being so paranoid. Perhaps if you interacted more with people, you'd realize we're not a bunch of scary monsters out to get you. I think we're done here. You know, B never would have got accepted to Gaylor Street if they knew she lived in this house. You come in here with your Microsoft money and think you belong? None of the other mothers like you, Bernadette. We had an eighth grade moms and daughters Thanksgiving on Woodby Island, but we didn't invite you and B. Don't you dare drag B into this. Oh, we love B. It just goes to show how resilient children are that she's turned out so well in spite of it all. If B were my daughter and I know I'm speaking for every mother at Woodby Island, we'd never ship her off to boarding school. I want to go to boarding school. You want to escape? And who can blame you? <gasps> oh. <gasps> Ow. I pray for you, B. I really do. You pray for yourself! I know I shouldn't have hit her, but I was just so mad. Oh, my darling, come here. You're super cool. You know that. Mom wasn't the same after that. I don't care what Dad or the doctors or the police or anybody says. It was Audrey Griffin screaming at Mom that made her never the same again. Dr. Kurtz? Hello. Um, you don't know me. My name's Elgin Branch. Good afternoon, Mr. Branch. My friend Hannah Dillard sang your praises after her husband, Frank, stayed at Madrona Hill. Okay. I'm deeply concerned about my spouse. Her name is Bernadette Fox, and I fear she's very sick. I don't really know what to tell you. I can't believe I'm making this call. Look, I'm gonna give you a bit of background, okay? Mm -hmm. We met 25 years ago in LA. Bernadette was a rising star in architecture. She was beautiful and mm -hmm. funny and well, I fell in love. She ran into trouble at work and I was offered a great work opportunity in Seattle so we got out of LA. Bernadette became pregnant and had the first of a series of miscarriages. It was three years before she made it through the first term. Our daughter, B, was born prematurely. She was very sick, finally diagnosed with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. You've been through the mill, Mr. Branch. Bernadette immersed herself in B's recovery. I mean, I worked longer and longer hours. By the time B entered kindergarten, she was healthy. I just assumed that Bernadette would return to her architecture practice, but she wasn't interested. I encouraged her to make friends, but she claimed that she tried and nobody liked her. She hates Seattle. <laughs> she has no friends here. She rarely leaves the house. When I try to talk to her, she launches into these diatribes which last for hours. She has no solutions, no answers. <sighs> I was walking to lunch on Friday with some colleagues when one pointed to Bernadette asleep on a couch in a pharmacy. She was wearing a fishing vest. Bernadette does not fish. When I woke her up, she said, hello, Elgie, I'm waiting for some Haldol. Right. She's taking an antipsychotic. What am I meant to think? I rescheduled a business trip so we could go to dinner and talk it over. I was surprised to see you at the pharmacy today. Shh. 
She was eavesdropping on the table behind us. They don't know the difference between a burrito and an enchilada. What do they look like? I don't want to turn around. People, Bernadette, they look like people. What kind of... They're covered in tattoos. About today. Oh, was that one of the gnats you were with from Gaylor Street? Su Lin is my new admin. Those gnats have always hated me. She's going to turn you against me. That's ridiculous. Nobody hates you. The waiter. He's about to take their order. Oh, I can't hear. Bernadette, if you lean any further back, you can... Oh, whoa! Whoa! Oh. 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 Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <sighs> Did you see the tattoo one of them had on the inside of his arm? It looked like a roll of tape. Know what one of the guys at the drive through Starbucks has on his forearm? A paper clip. It used to be so daring to get a tattoo, and now people are tattooing office supplies on their bodies. You know what I say? I say, dare not to get a tattoo. Oh, my God. It's not just any roll of tape. It is literally scotch tape with the green and black plaid. God, I hate the chips here. What were you saying? I'm curious about the medicine they wouldn't fill for you at the pharmacy. Oh, I don't know. A doctor wrote me a prescription, and it turned out to be hollow. Is it your insomnia? Have you not been sleeping? No. I'm just anxious about the trip. What are you so anxious about? Uh, the Drake Passage. People. I'm not good when exposed to people. I think we need to find someone you can talk to. I'm talking to you, aren't I? Fishing vests? Sleeping in public? Agoraphobia? Antipsychotic medication? When B was two, she developed a strange attachment to a book Bernadette and I bought from a street vendor in Rome. It, it had photographs of present-day ruins with overlays of how they looked in their heyday. I realized I was looking at Bernadette, past and present. There was this terrifying chasm between the woman I fell in love with and the one sitting across from me. We came home and Bernadette went to sleep and I went to look in the medicine cabinet and found dozens of prescription bottles, Xanax, Clonopin, Ambien, Halcyon, Trazodone, all the bottles were empty. We are meant to be taking our daughter to Antarctica in two weeks. I've been thinking that B and I should go while Bernadette checks into Madrona Hill. What do you think, Doctor? Is, is that possible? I think, Elgin, I need to pay you and your wife a little visit. And you can hear part five of Where'd You Go, Bernadette? by Maria Semple tomorrow at the same time. It was adapted for radio by Miranda Davis and directed by Emma Harding.